today knowing that your spirit and your word can change us. And we thank you, Lord, for the power of God that is at work in your word. For it is as life unto us. And it gives us instruction. And it brings us into the places of peace and grace and mercy. Father, I ask that in Jesus' name that your word will find a place in our hearts today. And I, I ask that you would bless your word first to me and to everyone that is here. And I pray that you would be exalted in all things. And we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 5, just three verses beginning in verse 5. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Casting all your anxiety on Him, because He cares for you. I want to speak to you today about anxiety. Anxieties are meant to be cast, not cared. Let me say that again. Anxi anxieties are meant to be cast, not carried. Now, the dictionary says anxiety or worry is an uneasiness or fearfulness of mind. That something bad or unpleasant is going to happen regarding an impending or anticipated circumstance. Anxieties. What are you worried about today? Well, I want to tell you that a recent study said the top ten ter uh, worries in our, the hearts of people in our country are this. First, number ten, dieting. How many of you just get all bent out that you're not dieting enough? Job security. Rent and mortgage payments. Credit card debt. Low energy levels, overdrafts and loans, overall fitness, lack of saving, financial future, growing old. And believe it or not, the number one a worry, at least in America, is our weight. <laughs> now, you can observe several things. That can be pointed out on our list. Most fall into two categories, health and finances. These are also universal human conditions. We all suffer with the same issues. And these issues will be with us as long as we live. So unless you're planning to die soon, Probably most of these issues will run across your desk. <clears throat> Have you ever considered how much time you spend worrying? Now I want to say to you that I work, as, a, as most of you know, presently at the New Haven uh, lockup, and we take people in off the paddy wagon, they come in, and uh, we have certain uh, pack paperwork that we initially have to ask questions to them, and we always have to ask if anybody has any serious medical conditions, and of course that's meant more to be associated with heart attacks or uh, previous heart attacks or uh, blood uh, uh, Is yeah, that pressure, it? blood pressure, or any other thing, but you know, almost always, I would say close to 50% of the people that respond to that 
say they have anxiety. And I want to tell you that I hear that every day. All day. How much anxiety is in your heart? We carry our anxiety. Each week, the average person spends 14 and a half hours worrying about one or all of those issues. Which means that every year, 744 hours in your life is spent on worrying. In a lifetime, it encompasses 5.2 years of your life. No wonder we feel like we're under so much pressure. No wonder we find it so hard to conscience, concentrate or have trouble sleeping. Most people are not just anxious about one issue, but many issues wrapped together. They have issues in their job, in school, in money, in work, in health, in bills that are not paid, in spouses and kids to provide for, and problems that go on with medical issues and all other kinds of worries. When we carry our anxieties, our anxieties strangle us. Anxiety, the word anxiety, is to give place to doubt and fear and allow one's mind to dwell on difficulties or troubles. The word in our text today in verse 7 says, Cast all your anxieties on God because He cares for you. Now that word is a Greek word. And it means anxiety, worry, or care. It is actually a combination of two different words. The first one means to divide, and the second one means mind. And that's exactly what anxiety does. It divides your mind. And therefore, anxiety means that you go all to pieces in your mind. How many of you have been there and done that? Many of us, more often than we would like to admit. You know, I, I heard uh, about a man who had a grandson who was experiencing some very serious medical conditions. And he, he spoke of emotionally kind of being on a roller coaster. Because the doctors at first gave promising news then they gave really good news, and weeks later, they gave not so good news. And he was taken to the top, and yet suddenly dropping to the bottom. And he said, in a telling phrase, he said, I have found that my thinking has gone to pieces. I can't get my mind to focus on anything else. You see, anxiety is an excessive concern over the affairs of life. The key, obviously, is the word excessive. Anxiousness and worry happens, but when you are so concerned about the problems of life that you carry it wherever you go, it begins to dominate your thoughts, and it is an all-controlling feeling of uncertainty and fear. To give place to worry or anxiety is a sin. They say, well, how could that be a sin? It really is a sin. Why? Well, firstly, because worry displaces God's position in your life. 
For anxiety removes God from his proper place as our Heavenly Father. And anxiety perverts your thinking as though God is nowhere to be found and you are left alone trying to solve your own problems. Secondly, because it distracts you from the things that really matter in life. As long as you are crippled with anxiety, you can't do very much else. You are strangled by your anxieties. How many of you lived in that place? How can we tell when legitimate concerns of life have become sinful anxieties? Well, here's a little test that you can put on yourself to determine if that's so in your life. When the thing you are concerned about is the first thing you think about in the morning and the last thing you think about at night, you're being choked with anxiety. Amen. When you find yourself thinking about it during every spare moment of your day, that anxiety is a severe problem in your life. When you find yourself bringing it up in every conversation, you can be assured that anxiety is overwhelming you. You see, seen in that light, Light. most of us worry a lot more than we would like to admit. Yes? Amen. How many of you would you today? All right. Let's hear a little amen. Amen. And, and, uh, amen. 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 Let's, get, amen. let's get down. And, you know, I always say this, and I, I found it to be true. I happened, uh, even as a young man when I got saved, I sat right there. That was the seat I sat in. You know why I sat there? Because I didn't want to be distracted. And I wanted to enter in to what God was speaking to me. Amen. And, and I was able to do that. And, and I want to tell you, that's what you and I need to do. God has an answer for our anxieties. Yes. Yes. And it's found in our text. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. If you look at different translations on that verse, you will find a number of different words used to describe that Greek word, Marineo. It In our passage, in the, the uh, New King James, it says anxieties. In uh, others, other translations, it says cares, burdens, worries. And you know what? Anxieties, cares, burdens, and worries covers all of life. Amen. No matter which word you choose, God makes the same invitation to all of us. Our Heavenly Father says, Cast off your anxieties. Cast off your cares. Cast off your burdens. Cast off your worries and give them to me. Amen. How can we respond to God's invitation? By casting our anxiety on our Heavenly Father. Now, I, I love word studies. You know, if you're going to read your Bible, you got to get Esword. How many of you, how many of you have Esword right now? Amen. What's the matter with the rest of you folks? Come on. <laughs> how many of you have a computer? Raise your hand. Don't lie. All right. I have that. You need it. And I'll tell you why. Because there's every verse of Scripture is jam-packed with truth and hope and grace and mercy. Amen. God is ready to move in your life. But you know what happens is you just read the, if you will, the light or part of what it's trying to say. You've got to look up words to understand the fullness of what God is saying to you. And I want to tell you, if you do that, it will. you will just be flabbergasted at how God will so intimately bring that scripture to bear in your life. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Come on. Amen. You see, the word is our strength. This is what we, God has given us. He has given us of his spirit and his word. And I want to tell you, those two things alone enable us to live godly before
before the Lord our God. So an angel say amen. amen. That's what we need to do. If you're neglecting your word, I'm telling you, you're neglecting Jesus in your relationship with him. The word casting used in this, in 1 Peter 5, 7, is the purito. And the only other place that you will find that same word is used in the New Testament in Luke 19, 35. And it is speaking of the uh, Palm Sunday, the, the day in which Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem. And it says here, and they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. So that word, casting our anxiety on our Heavenly Father, is the same word used in that verse. And what happened in that verse? The disciples took their heavy cloaks that they were carrying and they threw them on the donkey and then Jesus sat on top of that donkey and the burden was lifted. It means to throw off with vigor a garment or a bag or excess weight off the shoulder of a traveler and onto the bank back of the donkey, camel, or horse. You see, God did not design you and I to carry the burdens of anxieties and cares and worries on our back every day. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. He didn't design us to do that. For such loads are simply too much for you and I to bear. Oh, we may be able to manage some of those disappointments in life for a while, but eventually our body and our mind begins to break under the constant pressure of anxieties. Amen. The medical field has confirmed that the major source of sickness in our world is associated with stress and pressure. So if you're struggling with anxiety, fear, depression, or sickness, your condition is likely associated with stress or pressure. And it's almost as if God is saying, your shoulders are not big enough to carry the burdens you're trying to bear. And that load will eventually injure you. So cast your burdens upon me, and I will carry them for you. How many of you are ready to give God over all those anxieties? Do you want them? Do you need them? Are they good for you? Did God purpose that you should uh, be stressed and pressured every day of your life? No. No. In fact, just the opposite. His purpose was to free you from the anxieties of life. Amen. You see, anxi anxieties are meant to be cast, not carried. Our text says that we are to cast our cares upon our Heavenly Father in Jesus' name. The word cares translates to anxiety here, but as I mentioned, it also describes afflictions or difficulties or hardship or misfortune or trouble of any kind. And the word care here means to be concerned, to be thoughtful. To be interested, to be aware, to notice, to give painful and meticulous attention. You see, the Holy Spirit used that word to assure us that Jesus really does care about the burdens that are on your heart. And be assured that God gives meticulous attention to what is happening in every facet of your life. Amen. 
never let the devil tell you that your problems are too small or stupid to bring to Jesus. Take that burden, take that difficulty, take that challenge that you are carrying and cast your anxieties on him. For God is willing to take them from you and carry them for you. See, God is loving and gracious towards His children, and He's willing to carry our burdens for us. So, how do we cast our anxieties? How do we transfer our burdens onto our Heavenly Father? Here's where, here's where the rubber meets the road. Here's where this book comes alive. Here's where you find the presence of God at work in your life when you take up the call. Amen. To God's challenge. Amen. He's saying that you're filled with anxiety. And I want to tell you, I can understand why many people are in those positions. Because this is a pretty cruddy place to live in. Amen. And very soon from now. Amen. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I say soon. Let me, did, I, did I say something? You, you caught that, right? We did. Right. So, but soon, you and I will be in a position where we cannot wait to get out of here. That's very true. Uh, that is true. And if you don't see it, you better get on the news. Of course, you won't get that news on ABC, NBC, or any other majors. You have to go to other places where they actually give you news. That's true. Do you know that, right? Yes, amen. Do you know that? Do you remember back in the Cold War? Matt, and I'm old enough for that. I'm showing my age here. In the Cold War, we used to talk about those four Russians who never got any real news. They never were told the truth. They were covered over, and they would give uh, the news on, uh, in Russia was just what the administration wanted you to hear. That's true. I guess we got some Russians in our country. Yeah. All right? You get what I'm saying? Amen. I'm telling you, that you and I are going to be in a place that unless we learn from this passage, many people will be in places of real anxiety. That should not be in the life of the child of God. God wants us to place, us, place our trust in Him. Why? Because he cares for you. That means in the original to be concerned for, to take interest in, to concern oneself with you. That's what God said. What is surprising about that? Why should you think that God doesn't care? I have children. And I'm a child of God. My Heavenly Father says that He loves me and He loves you. Amen. What kind of father who would not care about what goes on in the life of their child? Amen. You see how foolishly we begin to think when we face these difficulties in life and anxiety and worries begin to get at work in our lives, all of a sudden it becomes twisted. It chokes out the faith. You begin to think that God doesn't care. When it's the farthest thing from the truth, when it says that God cares, it means He will not stand by and let things develop apart from His own influence. It means He will act. He will work. He, it, it will not always be the way you think it will happen. In fact, I find that it rarely happens the way I think it will. <laughs> However, God cares and He provides. Amen. 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 
You see, you've got to get your mind on right. If you're a born-again believer, then you're a son or daughter of, a, of the almighty and merciful God. And having cast our cares upon the Lord in prayer, we simply rest in our Father's wise, loving, gracious, and timely providential care. Well, we heard one say amen. Many say you need to hear that one again. Having cast our cares on the Lord in prayer, we simply rest in our Father's wise, loving, gracious, timely, providential care. Amen. 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 You see, we must simply learn to trust Him. The Lord, our God, is altogether trustworthy. Amen. You know what that word means? It means worthy of our trust. Amen. Yes. Did you see that? Amen. How many of you think God is worthy of our trust? Amen. He will do what He has promised to do, for He is not like you, or me. Sure. So don't get confused here. God is not like us. God makes a promise and he keeps it. God's promise here is connected to a command and the promise is meant to show you how to obey the command. The command is cast your anxiety on God. The promise is God cares for you. That means that he cares about the issues that are worrying you. Amen. And he wants you to rest and place your trust in him. Amen. And let him take care of the problem for you. Amen. Oh, yeah. Great deal. Great deal. Yeah. How can you be that? He's ready to take up your concerns. Yeah. You don't have to worry. Be happy. When you take up worry, you're choosing to do so. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be beset with anxiety. You don't have to worry. No, 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 no. Let me just say this, okay? Worry is different from diligence. So when a storm is coming, all right, what do we do? Well, we prepare for the storm, right? Amen. Yes? You prepare for the storm? Yeah, they talked about high winds or so uh, just a week or so ago. So before that happened, I went outside and I kind of shifted things around in a manner so that nothing's going to be flying out and hitting windows and all those other things, right? You know, we do we do these things when snow comes, we get the plow ready, you know, because we know we're going to have to get the get to cleaning out the driveway and the rest. That's not wrong. What's wrong is that we fret and worry and lose our faith in God. You see, you and I have a lot to glean. We have a lot to glean from this passage. I want to tell you, you ought to mark it in your Bible. You ought to stop, stop and remember, because you will need this, and I will need this for the rest of our days on this earth. Amen. You see, having cast our cares on the Lord, we simply rest in our Father's wise, loving, gracious, and timely providential care. Now, how many of you have asked God to do certain things in your life and God basically didn't do what you thought you asked to do? You see, sometimes God has a better plan. In fact, all the time. 
I was trying to give you a little hint here. I got it right. <laughs> once, you know, twice you got it right. But once or twice we might get it right. But you know what? The truth is, what we think we need is usually not what we need. What we think we the solution is is not the solution. Sure. We see things and we pray sometimes for God to heal us or or. Uh, fix problems that are at work in our homes, in our marriages, or uh, maybe, you know, in our finances or other things. And it doesn't seem to happen just like we kind of supposed it would happen. But yeah. down the road, yeah. down the road, you look back and you see that God in His wisdom and grace Provided exactly what you needed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Even Amen. though it was nothing that you thought it was should be. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You see, we must learn how to trust our Heavenly Father. We must learn to trust Him. He's trustworthy. That means he's worthy of our trust. And he will do what he has promised to do. God promises here is connected with a command. And the promise is meant to show you how to obey the command. He said, cast your anxiety on God. That's a command. Not, it's not a suggestion. It's a command. Amen. Cast your anxiety on him, and he will care for you. So basically, you take that problem, and you don't hold it close, but you give it away to God. And when you give it to him, he will bring the right answer. In the right time. In the manner in which you need it most, and you will be blessed. Amen. And you can cast off that worry. Because when you put your cares in the hands of God, who better hands could it be than His? Yes? Amen. Having cast our cares upon the Lord in prayer, we simply rest in our Father's wise, loving, and gracious, and timely providential care. Casting your anxiety on God means that you trust Him to handle it in His way and in His timing yeah. in accordance with His purpose. So lay hold of the promise that God has given to you. Know that God's purposes can't be thwarted. Well, what about so-and-so? Well, what about this circumstance? Well, what happens if, if this changes? Listen, Job said, I know that you can do all things, and no purpose of yours can be thwarted. He's speaking of God. He says, I know, Lord, that you can do all things. Is there anything do you, is there any problem in your life that God doesn't have a solution for? Did, I mean, did you ever see him? Is that Really? Seriously? He can do all things. He can do all things. And none of his purposes can be thwarted. Cast your burden on the Lord, the Psalm 55, 22 says, and he will sustain you. Psalm 56, 3, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Circle it. Psalm 56, 3. Psalm 37, 5. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. Matthew 6.25, do not be anxious about your life. 
what you eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It is not, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient of the day, for the day is its own trouble. Amen. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything pray and bring prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and let your requests be made known to God. For he who has said, I will never leave or forsake me. Do you know why we worry? We worry because it gives us the illusion that we're in control. We're never in control. But it gives us the illusion. And, and that somehow makes us feel like we're in control. But I want to tell you, there are certain exclusive privileges that God has. And that is this. He's in control. Amen. Not you. Amen. At any time. Amen. Nor me. God gives us repeated assurances that we may be able to walk in faith and trust Him so that we don't have to be strangled with anxiety. Don't be strangled. Choose not to be strangled with anxiety or the things you can't control. Release your anxiety by casting that anxiety on the Lord. For Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. rest. He says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and He will sustain you. Amen. He says, Even to your old age, I am He. And to gray hairs, I will carry you. Already there. And I have made, and I will bear, and I will carry, and I will save you. Praise the Lord. You see, anxieties are not meant to be carried, but to be cast. Amen. You buy it. See, the truth of us, the truth here is that many of us have prayed for certain things that are dear to our heart. You may think that maybe God didn't answer or wasn't willing. Or chose to ignore. But none of those things are so. You see, behind the scene of your life, there's an almighty God who reaches down from the heavens above, reaches down into our lives. Rarely do we understand why God takes the road he chooses. But the scripture says that God's ways are above ours. We'll never understand his words. For he is God Almighty. And he sees and knows that he is infinitely wise, infinitely powerful, and yet intimately in love with you. As a father loves their child, so our Father loves you. Life is besetting. Anxieties, cares, hurtful things, disasters, unexpected problems. 
But God is always present in the life of the believer. Do you know Jesus as you say? Have you become born again? Born in newness of spiritual life by way of faith in Christ Jesus. That's the, that's the first step. You see, you have to receive Jesus into your life. For he will never push his way into your life. Only softly, quietly, beckons to you and to me. To join into a relationship with him through Christ. Life is still with anxiety. In the days to come, there'll be much more opportunity for you to be anxious. But you don't have to go there. You don't have to carry that burden. You can just give it to the Lord. And He will bring to bear the right solution for your problem. Because He loves you. I always say this. I will give my own last dollar. I will give my arm, if necessary, to my sons in a time of need. And nobody has to encourage me to do that. But I am such an imperfect father. But my heavenly father has a greater love, a greater wisdom, a greater desire to work on your behalf. And all you and I need to do is take that problem and shift it right over to him. Amen. You stand. Some of you have prayed for things for a long time. And that has not come to pass yet. And you say, well, why is that so? Because God has a perfect time. Because God knows what we don't. Because he will bring to pass his purposes in our life. If we trust him. Sometimes, as I've mentioned, the answer that God gives isn't the one you expected or asked for. But God will answer because he's faithful. And he's faithful. He's faithful, and you can trust him. Amen. Maybe you're here today and you've never asked Christ to come into your life. You've never made a true commitment. The Bible talks about making a covenant with him. A relationship that is built upon a promise. That's what marriage is. Marriage is a relationship that is built upon a to one another. And God calls us to that kind of relationship. He doesn't call us to the religion. He doesn't call us to be religious. He calls us to be in a relationship with Him through Christ. If you've not done that, if you've never been born again, if you've never entered into that kind of a covenant, maybe today you want to do that. Maybe you, you, you just want to do that. Whether you're here in the home, you're home watching, or here in the church, respond to his call. Become a child of God. Give your life to Jesus. You will never, never be sorry for Jesus. Is there anyone here with every eye closed? Maybe there's somebody here who wants to receive Christ. You're not doing that for me. You're not doing it for a church. You're doing it for a relationship with God through Christ. If that's your desire, I will pray with you. Anybody here today wants to do that, then raise your hand and I'll pray with you. You're here at home. And God is speaking to you. Right there where you are, kneel. Cry out to God in Jesus' name that he would forgive you for your sin. Ask him to come in and change your heart 
and make you spiritually new. A new man in Christ, a new woman in Christ. And then get your Bible out and read it. And begin to pray. And what will happen is the words out of those pages of the Bible will leap into your heart and strengthen you. And your prayers will call down power from heaven and he will intercede in your life. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, God, for your great grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, that in spite of all the troubles and issues and anxieties of life, that we don't have to carry them on our back. We don't have to hold all of those issues and bring stress difficulty to our life. Rather, Lord, we want to put it on you. We ask that you would take those things and that you would shape and mold us and bring to pass your purposes in your timing in accordance with your will. And we will give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. 